whatever milestones that black people make against hate, it ends up benefiting all the other people of color. I can't see what his end game is. The Republican Party is the party of racism, is the party of white supremacy, is the party of hate. This is wrong and it needs to stop. Everybody wants to go back and drag that piece of history up, but they don't want to go back and deal with what their ancestors did to the indigenous people and to black people in this country. Uh-uh, you got to go. And you got billionaires talking about going to space and Jeff Bezos, go, never come back. I hope you get lost. This man has lost his mind. Boom, come on, girlfriend. What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show, the home of Epic Conversations, and I am the host of Epic Conversations, 2020 Best Podcast News Award winner and 2018 Innovation Award winner given out by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. And also, I host the only online conversation in the world for dads and fathers that is sponsored by Dove Men Care. It's also co-sponsored by Dad Central, Canada's national fatherhood organization. And through that collaboration last year, I was able to be part of a team that reached out directly or indirectly to over 100,000 fathers around the world. As always, I like to say you're blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles and a solution for someone's problem. We are broadcasting, wow, the second Saturday of 2022 already, but it's state of State state of things, not state of things. <laughs> I, I always get it wrong. <laughs> but you know what? I'm just going to say it's Jill and Aisha time. I'm just going to call that now from on. So, because I can get that easier. I remember that easier than anything else. But Aisha will con- correct me as always. But I hope that everyone is well, fine, and safe. State of things with Aisha and Jill is ready to make things happen. So, let me bring everybody up because. They deserve to be up. And also want to say, hope everyone's staying warm. At least in my area of the world, it's darn cold. So, so I know it's cold in Connecticut, but I know it's warmer in Cali. It's warmer, but it's still cold for us, you know. So, But I'm not going to moan about it because I know you guys are really cold. It's 19 you know? degrees today. Yeah, 19. Yeah, I was moaning about 43 degrees 43 degrees warm yeah Yeah, but my but my our blood is so much thinner you know at this point thinner than yours because we don't know how to toughen up that's gold for us (laughs) you guys well you're pampered you're pampered true we also deal with like 120 degrees yeah Yeah. like i got tired of asking after a period of time how things were in california because i always heard no rain no rain, no, no rain, rain, no rain, forever and ever. How are you ladies doing? <clears throat> Good. Good. Yeah. You, su- Good. you survived January 6th? Yeah. Um, thankfully, um, nothing popped off. Um, I didn't watch all the commemoration on cable news. Um, I kind of, I watched some, then I took some time away. I had to focus on work, of course, but um, in the evening part, I didn't really spend a lot of time um, focusing on that. Uh, we're going to talk later about the Emmett Till miniseries, and so I was watching that and just kind of taking a step back from it all. Excellent, excellent. Well, we're glad to have you both, uh, even though I'm on the other side of the border. I was concerned a little bit of what was going to happen on <laughs> January 6th, because who knows what's going to happen on uh on a one-year anniversary, some people would celebrate, other people would maybe do some other things, but I'm glad mm-hmm. you're here. So let's go ahead for, well, before we go any further, I want to say hi to some people who have shouted out nice and early. Black Beauty, who was in the room even before we went live. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, of course, Loyal Jen Myers. Hope you're doing well. And Blue Rains. I don't think you were with us last week, but welcome back. Happy 2022. Glad to have you. So let's start going full focus on January 6th. Uh, there were speeches made by Biden. Biden. There was Merritt Garland. <laughs> <laughs> Who looked like he just Merit walked Garland, out of the Merit coffin. Garland. Right. 
And yeah. you look dead as hell. <laughs> Every time I hear that name, there's only one person <laughs> I think of. And who is that Mary person? Garland, Mary Garland. <laughs> that's that's he, ringing in my ear. Even if certainly, I see him. <laughs> certainly has no pizzazz, that man. I've got to say. I'm like, was he even awake? <laughs> I know. Yeah, I was, I was like, laughing at did he have a pulse? Because it was like the man was just standing there reading Whoa. off this teleprompter. Um, he is dry. His he suit's all so rumpled dry. and everything. It's like, I swear okay. to God, he just sat up out of his coffin, gave the speech, and laid back down. <laughs> He's a dry dude. I don't know. Well, well, so let me ask both of you. How come we're not... Well, sure, there are more more people being arrested, but how come no politicians have been arrested and convicted? I don't like this this uh, overarching um, belief that there seems to be um, in our government that you can't that some people are too big to be arrested for crimes and things of that nature. The fact that they're actually sitting there trying to figure out was this a crime do we charge them that i have an issue with we have the mechanisms for it we have the laws this if anything it's treason you wanted to help people overthrow the government you help people overthrow the government there is a constitutional law that deals with that and i don't know why we're dragging our feet especially when we find out a year later that the that someone put a bomb in the dnc when the vice president elect was in the building. Okay, so we're not just talking about just the overthrow of government. We're talking about attempted murder here on many counts there, and the murders that had taken place. These, I mean, I don't, people are trying to uh, be politically savvy in how to do with this. No, th these are crimes and charge people as such. What I do like though, is that um, I believe it was Liz Cheney saying that they're trying to figure out whether or not these people can ever run again for office if they're found to have contributed. But again, jail time needs to be had by all. I I, I know but I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna get in before Jill because I know Jill's ready with something. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna I'm gonna get in with something. And did any of you see? either uh, uh, the comments or saw the interview with Peter Navarro? Yes, I did. <laughs> that wackadoo just basically told, <laughs> yeah. you know, we faced the coup. This is how we did it. This was the plan. Yeah, he did. It's like he's begging to be arrested and they still won't do it. I mean, um, he told everything and you know, we we should really be very fearful about what just happened because, as Aisha said, there are laws in place. Mueller, you know, had already said that we could not charge Trump as a sitting president, but we could charge him once he wasn't anymore. And I'm sorry, but then what's his face? Garland comes back and says that that's basically we're dealing with something from the past. Well, most crimes happen in the past. You, I mean, it, it, like, honestly, it was at one point I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt. And I was like, OK, we're going to lay a new foundation to try to round up all the, the little people. No, that tends to be that if you futz around long enough with the little people, um, you run out the clock. So I want the people who carry the ball across to their touchdown. I want to start from the head down. I want to cut the snake off at the head. And then I want to deal with the tail and all the other hind ends and all that stuff. I don't agree with, with Garland. And I think whoever wrote his speech and crafted it, they were very clever. But And it went over for a minute. But the more you sat with that flaccid, milk toast garbage speech that he gave the less edifying it was and it made so little sense because we have a system of government and agencies that let them go get the little guys you don't need to what what you, you're trying to hem up what you want to go and get take tear the tear the whole room up 
I don't care where you have to get to tear it up. But he's talking about we're laying a foundation because we feel that we'll get more leverage. Well, not anymore, because now you just told everybody what your plans are. So that doesn't work. I mean, there's a reason that he's saying this. And that actually bothers me more. That disturbs me more. What was that? What was that? Because I'd rather he didn't say anything. Now you do have some... Just don't say anything. You're not going to arrest who we want you to arrest. You aren't even looking. It's like you. there are dust bunnies that have turned into monsters. And this man is saying, well, I don't know if we have anything really. Uh, we're going to look for the little, you know, sit down. He is useless still. I think that uh, who's the senator, the congressman, uh, Gallego, laid him out yeah. uh, from Arizona and said, we are not buying this. You know, this, this let's play politics from 1980 and 90, it's not working anymore. And if the Democrats and all these old people don't figure it out, they will be sitting in a gulag somewhere in about four years. The, um, the thing about this is that the when you listen to Merrick Garland's speech and then you hear um Benny Thompson and um Liz Cheney talk about it afterwards, this committee has more information yes. about these people who are at the top than it seems the Department of Justice does because yeah. they flat out said we're looking at criminal charges for Donald Trump. Okay, they're they're actually looking at this, and not only that, but it was also mentioned yesterday that they're now looking at members of Congress for, for criminal um, activity. So the, the committee is doing the job, but the committee does not have the authority to no, do don't. the law enforcement piece. And they need Merrick Garland to wake up in order to do that. And he's not going to. And at no, this point, he's not. At this point. He's running out well, the clock. I would do. He is. I would do if I was Joe, Joe running Biden. Running the clock would be to get rid of Merrick Garland. The problem I was, is, I was going to ask the, you if how problem, much is Biden going to tolerate? He right, won't. The problem is, he's been with the filibuster. But, he won't. But, he, but that's why he can't do it because he can't get the votes to get another person confirmed. Well, he really locked himself into a jail, didn't he? And that doesn't say much. It's like, dude, did you not anticipate anything? Do you ever play? Warcraft? Do you, well, did you but, ever play chess? But remember, I mean, you didn't see the Supreme Court coming down the line with your dumb mandates. You didn't remember, see that. He needed a two-thirds majority in the Senate in order to confirm his people. Girl, I'm so done. The other people that he had listed would never have been confirmed. That okay. was the challenge that he faced. Merrick Garland was the one that he knew that he could get confirmed right away. But, but Garland, Garland would have been better for the Supreme Court because of his waffling as opposed to being anything that's decisive, you right. know? Right. But he had, but again, he had votes on Merrick Garland. He didn't have the votes on the other people that were under consideration for the position. And so, um, because remember, one of the people that he had been considering was Elizabeth Warren. He wouldn't have had the votes to confirm her, even, even though she, she would have been, been thought of. No, been you a need, tiger. Even she, I'll tell you, I'm sick of her too. All she's ever done is talk about how bad the banks are, and there's only a handful of things that she's done. Personally, I'm tired of her. She got a little bit shady after the election too, and showed her behind and left us in the lurch at 1.2. And I still haven't gotten over that. Let her go too. She's part of the problem. These career people, we needed somebody out of the box well, who it, doesn't it, play the same way that they all do. And we really did. did. Somebody stuck. to go up there whipping their behinds. But well, unfortunately, we're stuck because yeah, we're stuck. of the fact that we have to have these people voted and confirmed in. So the people that we would like to have to go in there and kick butt are never going to get confirmed. Well, so that's because they didn't go and challenge some of the old votes for Mitch McConnell, for a bunch of other people that I feel probably weren't even in there legitimately anyway during their own damn election, because I heard a bunch of stuff about Kentucky so just during that election. In a, in a related topic, it's not our main mm -hmm. topic, is it the lady who is right now governor of New York, she did her first state of the state address, and then part of that is that she's pro proposing term limits for yeah. people that serve in... Well, 
there is already a bill in Congress that was co-sponsored, believe it or not, by Ted Cruz and AOC to put term limits on happen. members of Congress and the Senate. That's not it's gonna not going to happen. No, nope. it's, it's not, not going to happen, happen because the very people who would vote for it are the very people. Who exactly. Would no, they, that, that, that ain't going to happen. So this Peter Navarro stuff, do you think the committee will ask him to testify? I would love yes. to see Yes. I, I I think that's going to be primetime television to see how he's yes. going to walk back on that. I think they will subpoena him. They I have think to. Up, I think they, they'll how could they not? Because, because he went out. I mean, because the video can be used. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, and I, I also want to take a look at another aspect of Jan, January 6th. And it's, let me just pull it up. Uh... Okay, so this was interesting. Here's a story. Let's bring it up here. A year after the January 6th riot, Americans and Canadians agree U.S. democracy is in peril. Totally. Yeah. They're saying it even on German TV, watching a documentary the other day. Believe me, decisions are being made with the concept that America is not going to be involved in the next four years. And people are shoring up what their new alternatives are going to be. This is not funny. You know, a lot of Americans don't have access to watching these programs. And they should. They really, really should. Because the fact that Merrick Garland has not pulled anybody in, in as it, even just it would give us a leg to stand on about our democracy. But even the world has no faith in Merrick Garland. That's the funny thing. They ridicule him. But see, I, I wish I could pull. I will bring some some things from Italian press, French press, yeah, Jill, if you, and, yeah, if you and can German. Going forward, just and so can, you can see. I can get see. the link and we can, I can screen they, share this. But yeah. so American He's ridiculed. It's so American, though, to be just um, one-sided and thinking that we live in a silo because America doesn't really consider itself part of the world. It considers, it considers itself its own entity. The people in it consider, consider America its own entity. So they don't really look to see how this is really playing in the rest of the world. Well, in they the said the you're world, right. And how it's going to affect us eventually. So you have Hungary, who has Oban, who is Vic, whatever his name is, going crazy, wilding out. You had Italy pull back where they were going to totalitarianism, and then they ended up with a guy who was kind of cool because it looked like our guy, Biden, was kind of cool. They're all struggling at the moment. So what's ultimately going to happen is, you know, they were talking on one show that, you know, with, with America, it kind of does sort of lay the groundwork a little bit. It sets the tone of everything, right? And that tone... Uh, has been definitely altered forever. I mean, to the point where it may never be resuscitated again. And that's how they're talking. And so what happens is all the plans like the climate change or whatever else that have been on the agenda, they're t taking it with a grain of salt because they know in a little amount of time it could change. They also know that the temperament of the American people is very different than what they've ever ever been blatantly see you know exposed to and there is a lot of people changing their tune um we know that one of the biggest fights going on right now with the melting of the arctic is for that space up at the top basically and america ain't going to be in that that whole trade situation is going to happen i mean america could find itself very much isolated and the big pr pr predator in the world because the world is moving on without it in a well, way there's but, no but, real reason so well, but both you know, of you live, to but, make but, plans but, i mean it's like making plans with somebody who's gonna freaking ditch you we Would live you in a do country that? that that constantly and consistently the people in this country want to go back and they don't know exactly where they want to go back to and the um, people are a cancer to your people. So why would you, you know, you cut flights, you start cutting certain things. It makes no sense. You start branching out. You know, you've got the Pacific thing going on. you got, you develop trade in other places. 
Uh, well, let me tell you. What's going to have to happen is the rest of the world is going to have to say, look, America, you're on your own. We're not going to trade. Uh, but, 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 I, but, I think, but I think you nothing. Because they but, say the country is going to be totalitarianism and they see it happening. The, but, some of the philosophers of these countries are talking about it. All signs point that way. And the worst part is Biden and his administration appear incredibly weak. And, um, but, but, but and how, our attorney but, general but, but, but Jill, has done nothing. But Jill, gives them no faith. But for both of you, then, wouldn't why isn't the incident on J January 6, 2021, not shedding light with Americans and we've got to work together to make it better? Because we have people who have mental problems here and they have been as if they've been radicalized. They have apophenia, the first precursor to schizophrenia when your psyche splits. This is a very serious, go have a conversation with Trump supporters. It is a mental disease, what's happened. They have been radicalized to the point where there's just no way to get them back without actually putting them in a facility. I was re watching one man talk about what he had to do with his wife, who was giving away what she $200,000, took out another mortgage on their home. He had no choice to stop this woman and her no, donations. It's, it's it's dangerous. People aren't talking about this. But I don't think it's, mental, I don't think it's mental illness. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna go there and give people that out. To be perfectly it's honest. It's mental when it illness comes, when you've been when it radicalized. Comes down to it, Trump, Trump hit those people at their basic hatred. It's hate. These people have such I, When you believe that John Kennedy things. Jr. is coming back from the dead, you have been Freaking brainwashed. But what opened the door ethics. to lead them? What opened it, the door to lead them to because that? Because it's the, were drawn to the hate. Because the apophenia hatred. is definitely one of the biggest campaigns. It's been used in political political agendas and cyber wars and cyber whatever they call those things for ages. When you can raise doubt on a group of people and get them to you know totally dismiss that the reality that with, of what hate we've been doing we we live in a white supremacist I'm country. sorry we've been doing that forever this I'm not sure that it's all it totally is. right that's a part of it I, but it ain't it I, 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 about I, him coming down that escalator right he the three things that he started with that drew people to him were based in hate now how people have taken it further is the way that some religious um cults kind of operate but what he what he appealed to was people's basic sense of hate and me and me over them and in this 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 battle i i think that when it, it's kind of like when you give people the out to say well it's mental it's mental illness and these people aren't right in the head it gives them more of an excuse and it gives society an excuse to excuse no i don't agree with that people who actually hate people have a mental problem that's mental i, I that there's no way that's not even a human being and we should stop with the oh it's like hate and blah 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 it's a mental illness it co comes from fear all of it originates uh, from fear. Finally, the fear originates that, but look the hate the hate, hate originates from fear with, people are you know, afraid so i was having this conversation with my daughter the other day about mm -hmm. the difference between hate and fear and that sometimes it really frustrates me when people say oh hate is rooted in fear not all the, not all the time because when because the the ultimate in hatred people who ultimately hate do not fear persecution that's they, not they, what the root they is you're not looking at the right anything. root the root is about you're going to take something that i am on this land you're going to take my space the fear is i can be outnumbered i can be replaced the fear is you're going to take my women. You're going to take my job. You're going to, you know, I'm afraid of you because I saw movies about you. I'm afraid of you because you make me scared. I'm afraid of your dark skin. I'm afraid of your white skin. We've got to address that we all do it. There, I'm the hate come before the say, fear. You can't. That's, that's but, the question. Did the hate come before the fear? Fear comes first. People were afraid of fire and they come up with all these concoctions. 
People were afraid of an herbal remedy. Oh my God, it's from the gut. That's fear. It's all rooted in that. Biases, they all come from fear. And we're living in a world that when you show somebody a fact, they don't believe it. They don't believe it. What do you do with that? It's all rooted in fear. I have, to, I have to dis, I have to disagree. And the reason I say I disagree is because there was this campaign launched in the late 90s and they tried to do it in the early 2000s to make racism a DSM four at the time category mental illness. When you start talking about it being a mental illness, you then open the door for it to become a legal mental illness and then for people to not if everybody it. votes and deals with it but people don't honest vote, with when you, it comes to the I think it's a mental illness. illness people don't vote for that that's I the, think that's it the, is uh, taught America's and I think it's a mental right. illness that's okay. right I mean, you, like, what, people well, are content well, well, with it. Well, let, well maybe we'll the land solution on that. would be if you have that mental illness then we co-sign you getting a freaking lobotomy God forbid you get racism as your mental illness because it's called lobotomy time we're gonna that's, the solved, right? that, that's the other part of it is that when it comes to determining this, saying it, it, it is a mental illness, you open the door for too many people to say, oh, guess what? Oh, yeah, I shot that black kid because I have racism, which is a mental illness. Um, so I'm going to use this defense that um, we this, only um, have conversations defense. like this because lawyers in America have been given way too much leeway to and fuck up the whole you, country. I'm not but even I'm telling you, the fact that we have to debate that is crazy. But I'm not look at about it. it. Just Men have ruined it. the planet and so have attorneys because they will sit and <laughs> argue <laughs> why a woman, you know, why this is striped. A lawyer, a good lawyer will always be the contrarian. So they'll argue anything, mental illness, All right. whatever. We're going we're gonna to hold it right there because... We could go on this one, but I think this is another conversation where we may have just a whole conversation about. So what I'm going to say is that one thing I observe from where I live, both the Democrats and the Republicans use fear. Oh, totally. In everything. Both sides do. So I think that, and, and fear is one of the most powerful things political parties use. And from where I'm sitting here, the Democrats will say, especially last election, don't let that 45 back in. He's going to attack you. He's going to jail you, et cetera. Whereas the Republicans say they don't want people that don't look like them in power because they're going to take away everything you have. So I think fear is used by both sides of the coin to further their causes. And it's that I don't see enough unity like I, I i'm still blown away about this january 6th thing i'm going how can a peter navarro say what he says and it, nothing nothing's happening because it was used with this fear thing i have a book that it's about genocide in rwanda and the hutsis and the the tutsis and the hutus or, yeah i might be saying it wrong were actual they were the same it's like you they were the same they were tribal, you know, then yeah. they created these differences. And that was because of the campaign that the army started putting forth. And it was like, you're different. You're different. You're different. I fear you. You're coming here to do. It's such an, one of the oldest tactics ever. And that had nothing to do with race. It has to do with fear. Aisha, give you the last word before we move on. Um, I actually do know a lot about the the Hutus and the Tutsis in Rwanda and, and the genocide stuff there. But a lot, and, and there I would say probably it wasn't just the um, the pitting of two against each other. There was a little bit more to that going back down the line. But, it was. It was the army but, up against the new regime. That's exactly what it was about. And when they cut off every, the soccer team's head and played football with it, you know, that no, was also, a fear well, tactic to the be other, like, but the you, other part of, you know. of that part with that history, the other part of it too was the um colonization of the area and trying to put two groups of people who were ethnically different together into being forcing them into being one. That was the other part of that. But they were I getting think, along fine before. That's the whole point. But when they you force they okay. were, but when you force I don't people, I don't get about that. Personally, they but, should have all be ashamed of how they let that get out of hand. But I don't think I don't think that we do 
a service to people by saying, oh, this is it. There's insanity and then there's crazy. Well, Those what is insanity? There Tell me, what is insanity? Things. There are two different things. Insanity is insanity is clinical. Insanity is something that um, can be treated. It's something that is has to do with mental. With, racism um, can't be treated. Here we are. But but seriously, racism can't okay. be treated because you do know you have people that have biracial people in their family. They have black people and they have an ideology, but okay. it's a whole different kind of white. Supremacy Ladies, we're, we're going to cut it right here because we could go on for we got a lot of things, but fantastic conversation. Uh, there's some top uh, comments here. Black beauty. Yes, ma'am. Too many Ameris are radicalized. But I also agree with Aisha that too many Americans Americans are white supremacists and this is who they are. Too many Americans are just racist. And then Christine, I don't understand this. True racist will then reference the DSM scare. I don't know what exactly. the Exactly. The DSM is what I said. It's the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Health okay. and Mental Illnesses. Thank and, you. And that was the point that I'm making. That To have that and say that it's crazy is scary. Okay. What, what is the solution to put them away based upon a penalty or punishment? You don't put away every mental person. You well, don't a, a couple shock mental treatments person. and who knows? They might be better citizens. And a, but again, that might not be, cells. that's the thing. If you decide something's crazy, you also have to come up with the remedy for treatment for it. And it has to be ethical. Well, that, shock treatments are still ethical. All right. We're People stopping. Still get them. Done. Done. We're done. <laughs> Easy now. Easy. Next up. Sentencing in the Ahmad Albury case. Any surprises that it was a uh, life? No. Plus 20. Plus for 20. The, for the father and son. So that means that when they die, their corpse is still owed 20, 20 years. Right. Were you surprised by the sentence? Were you happy no. with the sentence? What were your thoughts? Yeah. I actually thought that they might not have ended up with life without the possibility of parole. I thought that they might end up with a parole. Not me. I like the judge. I thought he was pretty decent. And I, I, if you look at what the, what they were charged with, it would have been pretty freaking impossible. The only way for them not to have life based upon the charges would have been if the judge was pretty shady. And for the most part, I thought he was pretty decent. He was decent. I, I think, think he went exactly by the book of what yeah. what was given to them. I mean, that was it. That was laid out by their charges that the DA charged them with and what they were found guilty on. I think it was kind of a slam dunk on that. The, the reason I think that they might, I thought that they might have gotten paroled, if you notice that some of the um, things that they were charged with and convicted of, he rolled the sentence. So he was, so for example, he's like, was it count six? Um, you know, we're going to roll that with three. And, and so. Right. Like, but there was still, it's best was they had doubled up, but the reality was that that was it. There was, was no way they could murder, roll. Yeah. You know, there were three, there was a category for one of them was enough. They all got charged. It was like, <laughs> okay. I was actually surprised, you know, that, that, uh, you know, it was as smooth and seamless as it was. I mean, the court you know, went pretty well. I was like, this is great. It's I, I want to agree with you, Jill. This trial didn't have too many hiccups. No. Mm -hmm. you so know, and, and part of what I think also helped was that this, this you got to remember, this trial sat side by side with the Kyle Rittenhouse one when they occurred. Mm -hmm. And so you had two two, view, two views of, of, of basically similar circumstances right and that i think you, you got to really see how the american justice system can be easily manipulated by the players involved so for example in the rittenhouse case you had a judge that just at this point really should not be judging anything and all of his <laughs> all of his judgments should come into question he got too involved in the case and and coddling the um the defendant in the arbory case you had a judge that was fair you also had a judge that could recognize when he saw it so for example yesterday when um 
Brian's attorney got up and, and said something, the judge was laughing. The judge had this smirk on his face, like, I can't believe I'm sitting here and he's saying this. So he, <laughs> he was definitely, and he was definitely more fair and open to the prosecution as he was fair to the defendants and let them prove the case. The mm -hmm. one thing I think that also was to the detriment of the McMichaels and Brian is that they had racist attorneys. Their attorneys used yeah. every racist trope. They'd they have been better off going pro se. On camera. You know, unreal. On like from the day they jumped out of the box. You're right, Aisha. Damn. On TV. And, that was and, and, the day and, they lost. Yeah, that was the day they lost. They showed their asses. And, and even the any racist the was like, oh, even... They didn't want to do that. Yeah. And then when that woman mentioned the thing about his to his toenails, that was it. R yeah. That was it. She should have just kept her damn mouth shut. You see, the and interesting thing about the mentality of racism is that you've got to be so, that's how sick they are, that showing them bare face who they are, look at what they do. They did, then they deny like, oh no, that's not us. But it really is them. I mean, it's just... It's they're all gonna so, appeal. They're it all doesn't appeal. matter. They're, they're never gonna, gonna get out. Look, they're never gonna get out, but they are gonna appeal. Unless um, unless uh -oh. Donald Trump I, gets back in. Uh, and then they'll get out. Because and that's the truth. Because he will get them out. And that is just how that will go. Yeah, I was thinking when Jill, when you were saying the only way I Can go you pardon people Supreme for, Court, you pardon, people for pardon. Uh, Donald Trump made laws. You know what I'm saying? Like he just made them. And that's why people liked him. I mean, I got to say, it's like that guy in a movie that you go, I like this character. He just makes it happen. People like that. So Joe Biden, if you happen to see this, make it happen. I don't care how you do it. <laughs> Make you know, it because that is what people have been groomed to, you know, in the last 10 or 20 years, you got to remember in the thirties and the forties and fifties, everybody went for the hero, right? Over time, we've seen a movement of the anti-hero. You see people going over the Joker, the, this character, the darker characters, and, and, and they've kind of been indoctrinated with going for the one who's not the obvious hero and finding that underdog. This is what, this is what I got to say, helped people to be like, well, there's no such thing as a Superman. Anyway, they're <laughs> sick of Superman. They wanted to make Superman flawed, all of it. So this is, this is what happened in this country. And this is why we're here where people have no decency. They're immoral, amoral, and, and, really excuse anybody for everything because they're like well they're only human these are jobs people have that have a bar on them that have a criteria a level we don't we've really sunk low so At yeah least, i think it was the only way they'll get out is if trump and his people get back in i actually don't think so now and the reason i say this is because there's they remember how trump is trump is very transactional these people can't do anything for him you, you see what I mean? They can't keep secrets. They don't know any of his secrets. They don't have anything like that. Think about the people that he pardoned. These are people that he wants to keep quiet. I wouldn't and, hold my breath. And the, the other thing, well, but if this was the case too, he would have pardoned Dylan Roof. These these three are also facing a federal civil federal hate crime for which they can get death, the death penalty. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, I I I couldn't really see where Donald Trump would give it about letting them out versus it doesn't take much to floss him. It doesn't. We've seen people do whatever. It does not take much to get Trump's attention. If you praise him like a God. You know, it's interesting. I was reading an article this week and it was polling done on Republicans, their thoughts of 45, McConnell, and Pence leading up to the January 6th and after the January 6th. Mm -hmm. Do you know that these group of people basically still have the same positive feelings about 45? Totally. Their feelings for yeah. McConnell and I've Pence dipped, have gone right down to the bucket. And I'm going to say something too. But that was by design. Yeah, but 
and we'll get back to the Arbery case, another thing in a second, but getting back to our first conversation piece, if I was Liz Cheney, I would make sure I have protection 24 hours a she day. She does. She actually talked about that and having to um, increase, okay. her secure, increase her security because of just she didn't trust the people that followed him. Okay. And so then, what, I'm, what I'm also going to ask then, we've had a number of trials over the last few years where people have been convicted for killing black people. Do you feel it's making any impact on America's soul and America's policing? No. No. Okay. All right. And the, and but again, it, this goes back to what I said before is that there is I have call me jaded or whatever. I've realized there is no cure for people's hatred. Okay. As long as there will be people who will hate we're going to keep seeing these murders happen. We've been seeing them happen. Was it Jesse Jackson on this documentary I watched the other day talked about just the number of black people lynched between 1888 and 1941, which was about 4,000. And you can imagine how exponential that number has gotten between 1941 and 2022. So I don't, and I don't think that part of, human nature can can change not in the direction that we're going in in america well because it's an ideology and they have a strategy and for me the strategy is to omit and and eradicate our strongest who happen to be our african-american males that's so obvious to me. They don't even have to hate them. They just all need to get the memo that they're given that says, get rid of them. Get rid of the young ones too. That's what this is about. It's, it's like, this is 101 killing. They've done it in, you know, they do it in Palestine. I mean, it's, it's just, it is, a, it is systemic in, in how to kill the strongest people in a tribe. But I don't want to leave the impression that all these people are organized. I think when people hear white supremacists, they're thinking of organized groups. The scarier part is that a lot of these people are not organized. They're radicalized, but they're not organized. But they have but an allegiance, have a, Aisha, and there's a big a, difference. Having an allegiance is different than being organized as a group. I've never said they and were organized. Not, I no, said no, their that's what I'm saying. I'm saying each one people, of us, each one of us will do our small part. You got to remember when I was growing up, <clears throat> they were face to face with us in the community saying hi to my grandparents and blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, going and burning crosses on somebody's lawn on the weekends or whenever they deemed fit if somebody overstepped or whatever. You wouldn't know unless you're looking at people's shoes. I heard the old people talking about who they thought so-and-so was in the clan. It's the same thing. Oh, they know. Because I think about those people. This goes, but what I was saying was going back to the January 6th piece is that I think about those people. Not all those people that were there were in the Proud Boys or the Oath Keepers or the Three Percenters. And that is something that, as Americans, we need to wake up to and realize that it's when we say people had this kind of hatred or lip or, or white supremacy, that they're not in groups. The, the default for people is to think that everybody's organized in these groups. The scarier part is that when you get a bunch of people who might have the same ideology and there is no organization, you see the kind of chaos that it leaves behind and how dangerous it is from what we saw on January 6th. Okay. This Ahmed Arbery trial and okay. what happened is no different than what happened with Mr. Bird when they dragged him behind a car. Right. It happened. We get one of these every 10, 20 years. Sad to say. That's what well, happens. Well, and, well hold on. And, they, but they're happening more frequently well, now. And than, yes, than, of course. That's, and, but, and, but I guess. Well, they were they, happening. Nobody was, was saying well, anything. And, and also they weren't too, even being tried. If it wasn't for social media, probably wouldn't be hearing about half of these things right. also. Right. right? Like right. The, the power of this little thing here. Mm -hmm. it, well, it, well, nobody believes that either. 
Remember how screwed up the artery case was <laughs> the to begin with. Took the video. <laughs> but remember how screwed up the artery case was to begin with. Wow. That the, that the um, DA that was there they didn't even want to press charges. Um, even though they had the video, remember how long it took for the video to come out? Of course, of course. And it just, it, it's I, 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 really, I want to see justice against the woman who was the DA who hit yeah. it. That's if mm -hmm. she goes down, she's then being maybe it'll be like, okay, but I, she should be more I really than want, that. She needs I really to have a child. I really wanted to know what was going on in that individual's truck. mind who was videoing doing that event like i really i really He's like to know. he was wrong. one of the good old boys just like the just like yeah, the but, other two so so was he thinking that this would never either either get out or will never get prosecuted for this no, no he, he tried he, to he, use he that, that to he protect was himself it. like he was right. like well look because i he filmed didn't it shoot. he didn't right shoot. he filmed it remember when and it, it first actually came out, the video first came out? Mm -hmm. he was yeah. on chris cuomo's show talking yeah. about yeah, I was just an innocent bystander who yeah, right. exactly. And, exactly. So it, it's like, come on, what were you, you really? <laughs> come on, man? <laughs> right. But Black Beauty has something to say here. The Diagnostic Statistical Manual, aka DSM, understand we will never classify racism as a mental yeah. illness because the crimes of racism would be excused. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I think everybody's splitting hairs here. But I would still say that racism is based upon like a fear and threats and feeling that you are superior to other people. And that's what it is. And it goes both ways. I think everybody needs to calm their own racism down. I don't believe in that thing. Like if you're not, if you're not oppressed, you can't be racist. Yeah. I think maybe we're more cautious about white people and what they can do. Maybe that's the word, but we really, I don't know what it is that's making people crazy. And then we can't even say that it's demon possessed either. Cause okay. I don't know what it is. There's just, let's we move have, it. We have an agenda. Let's and move it's it always on. been the agenda of America. So I don't get it. This is, they always wanted white people here and the story. And that's what they're saying. We only wanted white people here and we only wanted you all to work for us. That's it. Hmm. All right, let's move forward. Next up, Emmett Till miniseries and documentary. I did not have or have not the opportunity to see it. I know, Aisha, you have. So would you lead our conversation on this topic? Um, well, let me differentiate. This is a miniseries that's part of a TV show, which is different than the movie that is going to be produced by and starring Whoopi Goldberg. It's based, that one's based on my friend Keith Bouchamp's research and documentary. This okay. is this is um, part of a TV show called uh, Women of the Movement, produced by Jay Z and Will Smith. And okay. this particular season of it, they're focusing on Emmett Till's mother and Emmett Till and the Emmett Till case. So um, it started on Thursday. And they ran the first two episodes back to back. Next Thursday will be the next two, and then the the third Thursday will be the final two. With that, I what I liked was that the miniseries was very well acted. First of all, it's very well acted, and um, you the the young man who plays Emmett Till, the little boy who plays him, you really get to see and, and realize that this really was a child that was full of wonder and all of that and and also to have to say this that this miniseries is based upon his mother's memoir which i read years ago and um it was it was nice to finally see something like this come to uh the screen and being made um because i i've, I've known that pe different people have tried to get it made um over the years and to for whatever reason could not get it could not get it done um one of the one of the things that i thought um was interesting was that first of all all of the screenwriters and the actors i mean the screenwriters and the directors are women are black women and i appreciate that because to tell women's stories you really have to have women who are there there were some things that i wondered how they were going to handle um and it's it's 
the the encounter at the store between Emmett Till and Carolyn Bryant, who, by the way, is still alive. Um, I thought I was wondering how they were going to handle that because there is the version of the story that Carolyn Bryant told the police that the FBI later found out was fabricated. There is what Emmett Till's cousins saw when they were in the store with him. And then there were um, the what his uh, killers told um, Look Magazine in 1956. And I think that I had issues with that part um, but I think one of the most impactful things, and I wondered how they were going to handle it, was the viewing of his body. Mm. And it it was relatively similar and, and very shocking. And because it's a miniseries, um, you know, we're, we're just at the point where he's been killed and his, and his mother saw his body. So we haven't gotten to the part where she has the picture taken and shown and then the trial and all of that. But it's um, it's something, when you watch it, it's something that reminds you, this is why they don't want CRT taught, period. Mm -hmm. Because it would have to tell these stories. Mm -hmm. And stories like this. Okay. Uh, Jill, do you want to add? I haven't seen it yet. No, I haven't seen it. And I mean, yeah. as long as people make movies, that it kind of trickles over, you know, their kids are going to see it anyway. So, you know, that's how I feel. They'll see it on TikTok. They'll see edits on whatever. That People are not just learning stuff in school anymore. In fact, if they learn anything in school at all. Hmm. Yeah. So Aisha, where, where can people see this series? You can see it on ABC Thursday nights. Oh. And um, on Hulu, it's okay. streaming on Hulu. And also make sure that you watch the documentary that accompanies it because you have the documentary has different people in it, including Michelle Obama talking about growing up on the south side of um, of Chicago, and um, it puts everything in context. And, and rather than just saying, okay, here's a movie, this is what happened. This kind of gives you the history of black people, why black people came to Chicago, um, what, you know, what that little, um, what racism was like when they got to Chicago, how, what, how different it was, but also that it existed. And it was just very interesting. Well, you know, there's a funny story that I know about Pop Gordy, Barry Gordy's father. And, um, you know, he had a bunch of kids. Pop was like fair complexion like me. So a lot of times people thought he was, you know, of another color or whatever down south in, in, um, in the south. And um, he was doing some home building and he sold some wood to some people and town was really small. So, uh, it got out that he had made like $2,500 or something selling these wow. stumps of wood, right? And when he got the check for it, all these white people were like local, like, let me, to help, let me help you down to the bank to cash that money. So Pop actually left and went up to Michigan with his brother who was traveling up there because he did not trust anybody to take him to the bank with this check. Mm. And then he brought his wife and his children. So sometimes people left because they just had an inkling like, oh man, I'm not, you know, black people. That was a lot of money back in, you know, yeah. the 20 or the thirties or the, to have $2,500 from work and they were hawking him. Yeah. So he went out of town with his brother. Yeah. And set up business in Detroit. So that is so funny. Uh, funny how people make their moves and it actually has a silver lining. Yeah. My grandfather ended up here in Connecticut because his um, brother had killed a white man in self-defense. Mm. Mm. And they had to leave. Well, what we're going to do, folks, we're going to take a quick little break. And on the other, on the other side, uh, Jill, is, Jill is a huge tennis fan. And there has been a certain tennis player that has been in the news a little bit recently. And uh, we're gonna let Jill roll on that one. So keep it locked, folks. We'll be back in just a few moments. And I cannot wait, because I've been waiting all week for Jill 
to, to, to drop some knowledge bombs on what she has to say about this. So we'll see you in just a moment. Keep it locked. Go. So ladies, what is going on? Just that he needs to get it together. Sick of that. I am sick of it. Something is seriously wrong with you. Is that, I mean, why is he still there? Shouldn't She shouldn't be near Congress. You need an exorcism because I don't know what <laughs> yeah. is wrong with you people. It was so powerful. And I really wish everybody would stop bowing down to this. What, what is he talking about? <laughs> this makes no sense. They know they are not the oppressed party, but they love being the superior ones and they want to flaunt it. So it was always made political, particularly for people of color um, and the LGBTQ population. We end off every episode with a cockroach. This episode's cockroach. Ah, all everything. The everything? <laughs> all the things are going on. All the things? Mm -hmm. All right, we are back. Joe will be back with us momentarily. And uh, you're watching State of Things with Jill and Aisha. Or Aisha and Jill. Aisha, you know, you know who they are. If you don't, you're yes. with, but, <laughs> you're with us. Yeah, this is our version of This Is Us, right? That's our version <laughs> of This Is Us. And again, we like to say thanks to everybody, as always, for taking time, whether you're watching live, watching on the replay, or listening on the replay. Always, if you want, please send us ideas. And I am waiting for one of our audience to come on live with us. I, know I that really would like to have that happen one day, that someone would come on live from our audience. And she is back. Yay. She is back. She's chewing on some stuff. So she got some energy because she's going to lead the next part of our conversation. So here we go. Novak Dojovic, Detention Australia draws international uproar. So we have uh, Miss Miss Jill Jones, who is a huge tennis fan. One of we when we do back channel before we go live, a lot of times Jill and I will talk about what's going on with tennis, etc. And uh, so I'm Jill, up, so. let's have you lead on the Joker. Okay, so right now everybody's calling him Novax. Joe COVID. <laughs> they did a whole play on his name. So basically, he, um, you know, was scheduled to go to Australia to play and uh, a tournament. And then he was given, he's clearly he's unvaxxed, but he thought he could get an exemption to go into Melbourne. Uh, and they gave him an exemption. He was given one, but he was only given one by two of the three agencies that approve it from what I've been reading now. When he got there, they denied him for having access because he wasn't vaccinated. They want everybody vaxxed when you go into Australia. And so, you know, you're kind of like going, wow, he flew all that way. That really sucks. However, some people are a little bit concerned, like, well, how did he get an exemption? So then it sort of, you know, tipped the scale where some people are like, well, other people got an exemption. But now we're every he's they were going to deport him. Now he, he was in gone, a hotel. <laughs> he's in a hotel, an immigration hotel. But in Australia? Why, yeah. But why it looks really shady is that he could have gone home. He could have turned around and got on a plane and he could have left, actually. But he decided he wants to challenge the courts on Monday and see where all this went wrong, basically, I suppose. But a few people are a little bit like, you know, upset. His mom and his dad have been on TV, like going, he's being tortured. He's being held like a prisoner. Oh. But what happened is Melbourne, you know, you have to remember, they had some of the strictest lockdowns in the world. Yes, they did in Australia. They have, a, they have like the lowest rates in the world. Yeah. And they're got, you know how you just happen to have one of those guys who like is a stickler for his numbers. Uh, we've all worked for one. We know what that's like. Yeah. Uh, and don't forget he, he had COVID. Yo, well, that's the he thing. said, there, but there's here's the thing. thing. They, he thought that he could get the exemption because he had COVID on the 16th of December. Or when, or when was it? Because here's the thing. He was less than willing to tell anybody when he got it. So for me, the devil's in the details still because we don't really know 
how did he prove that he had COVID? Because this, a lot of people have had it, stayed at home, had a few tests. Did their doctor know? Did, it Was there, were the documents not real? I mean, what happened on that flight going into Australia <laughs> that changed for his, his outcome? Something happened. And I guess we will have to see on Monday what happens. But then it also turns into... Why would you fly somewhere knowing that you have three jurisdictions or three locations to approve and one hadn't? Why would you get on a plane to go? Like, yeah. are you going to force the hand because you are so special? I mean, you could and then make it really look bad. You're going to go into an immigration hotel when you're worth like how many gazillion million dollars? Yeah. Not and everybody's really upset. And then you get everybody to fight your plea and your cause. And you still think that's going to push you through. I don't know. It just seems very manipulative to me. Um, but then other people say that he might be going also because he doesn't want to be banned for three years. Because that's mm. the other thing that can happen with whatever went down. We don't know. Remember, sometimes people conveniently pull that HIPAA thing like, well, this is my medical stuff. And why were you exempt is the question. Right. When everybody who is exempt, like Nadal, he's a, he got the exemption, but he also was vaccinated. He also had COVID, too, over uh, before Christmas. Where's so, Novak from? Ser Serbia. Is it Serbia? Oh, yeah. So, you know, everybody came out about this is a front to Serbia. You would have thought they were in the war the way these people have been acting. <laughs> I think the war was tougher than Novak going into a hotel. And I do think that it was just really short sighted to fly somewhere when you're not intact. I mean, who does that? Somebody who's trying to push through. That's and to what think I that Australia is going to play around. Australia no, has not played around with this virus he, at all. I think he thought he was going to get special treatment and yeah. he's getting kind of special treatment, but maybe not what he's used to. It's special for a celebrity, I guess, that he thinks he is. I find it just weird because also, I mean, it, it, yeah, something is just strange to me. It doesn't make sense. And I also, it, if there's three different, you know, areas let's see you have victoria isn't melbourne is one of the victoria provinces i, I isn't believe it? so yeah so they really went through it and i don't know it's like the same in like new zealand the same thing they're very very hands-on about who comes in who goes out i mean hell most of the tennis players novak should have known uh ash barty she's been like traveling like a hobo for the whole last year during the pandemic because going in and out was just not conducive that you could do that even being from australia and mm -hmm. being a tennis professional so i don't know like i said he knew about it for a long time so i'm not buying all of it aisha your thoughts um <clears throat> if any I think, look i look i i just think that australia aims to keep its numbers down mm -hmm. and they don't care how famous you are or how popular you are we're not having this pandemic look like america period for real yeah okay all right good stuff well it so jill you being our tennis expert here do you think whatever way that this comes out will it have any impact on joker's legacy no more than like, he's just a pushy, like he's just always that guy in the room. And unfortunately, the only thing it is, is like, he's willing to upset the apple cart on everybody where now everybody's being scrutinized. Like who else got an exemption? And for me, he's, that's, he's another Gemini, just like Donald Trump. And they don't care who they hurt as long as they get their way. And I don't like that. That's the thing. You know, it's like calling everybody else out, you know, and that's not cool. When everybody else had their stuff together, also coming in at the very end of everything and creating utter chaos, you know, I yeah, don't know. And, and truth be told, we don't really know how long COVID, you know, how long it stays. Um, you might not have any symptoms mm -hmm. and be well and fine, but we don't know how long it sits with you to pass on to other people. I agree. We just don't know yet. All right. Well, as the Joker turns, we'll see as the when the next time it comes on, we'll see what happens next. Next conversation piece, 
Uh, Jill brought this to mm. our attention. Stephen Don Donzinger, I hope I get that pronounced right. Don and it tastes uh, and versus Chevron oil. So Jill, you need to take the lead on this one because you'll educate many of us on this. Yeah, um, towards the end of last year, we were saying like, what kind of cases or or topics did we should we have addressed or looked into? And I meant to bring up the Stephen Donziger case because um, you know Stephen Donziger is an American attorney. Um, who many people know because he battled Chevron, particularly uh, in an oil field case uh, where he represented over 30,000 farmers and indigenous Ecuadorians. Um, so the Ecuadorian courts awarded the plaintiffs $9.5 billion in damages, which made Chevron withdraw its assets and um, basically it was about related to the environmental damage that Chevron oil has been doing to uh, these people's land and uh, killing them with different cancers have been cropping up. You know, we know the story, but there was proof here and they kind of got hung, right? They just totally were for told to pay. But what they did, they were spiteful little bees, came back and um, they, uh, they, the, the, they decided Chevron decided, uh, filed a RICO anti-corruption suit against Donziger in New York City. And the case was heard by district attorney there. And basically they have forced him to, um, uh, the case was heard by uh, Judge Kaplan who determined that the ruling of the Ecuadorian courts could not be enforced in the US because it was procured by fraud, bribery and racketeering activities. And so as a result of that case, Chevron, being the bee that it was, got him disbarred from practicing law in 2018 in New York. They put him under house arrest. He's still in house arrest. And um, basically, for all the human rights uh, disgraces and murder and all the things that Chevron's doing, basically, the little guy, the wrong guy, is sitting in his house under house arrest. And I just had to say something and encourage everybody to just look into the case and do a little research of your own because there's something wrong with this. And, um, you know, it's even upset many people who are in, you know, the United Nations, the High Commissioner for Human Rights. We know that the oil companies have done some heinous things to people. Some have even said that the tipping point for our climate crisis and why it's in top speed is because of the Amazon fires. And we know that had a lot to do with oil, big oil. I think haven't we had enough of them controlling our lives and everyone's lives? And if whatever you do, just don't go to Chevron. That's all I'm saying. And read about the case because every little bit helps. We just have to, because it's, um, you know, we're sitting here talking about Emmett Till's life and how long, look how long it took for something like that to come out. I mean, I don't even know if we'll have a planet for something to really come out about all the heinous things that big corporations in this country have been doing. I mean, they're going to, these oil companies are fighting tooth and nail against any kind of climate regulations. And make no mistake, when we talk about um, the Build Back Better Act, that Joe Biden had, um, there were some serious climate provisions that would have put a lot of the kibosh on these oil companies. And one of the people who benefits from money from these oil companies is Joe Manchin. Right. And so they have vested interest in not wanting to see um, any of these regulations take effect. In the meantime, they're destroying the planet um, for the rest of us and our and children. While, you're right. And while we're sitting here, just so you know, a volcano in the Galapagos, the largest one just erupted into the Pacific Ocean. So whatever you subscribe to, whether it's Armageddon or uh, climate change or whatever you want to call it, it's happening. Something is happening and it's all over and there's no denying it. You'd have to be a real abject fool to be able to deny that uh, it's here. Mm -hmm. I mean, why do you and, think you have Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk flying to other planets? 
Girl, Elon Musk put on a horrible 1970s looking outfit. They don't care. They'll be on a they'll be jetting out of here. But yes, they're looking for someplace else to live. They are. And don't B. let anybody tell you that they're sitting up here. They are looking for a plan B. And if it means they have to fly around for however long, but that's what's happening. Um, and it's I found it really interesting that Leo DiCaprio hung out with him on New Year's Eve, actually. See, this is when all that stuff is. It's like you got a couple people trying to save the planet and then you got a few of them securing their own space on the ship. Okay. So uh, pay attention, people. This is happening and it's going down. And, you know, I don't even know if I don't even know if we'll be able to save it. Mm. But I do know that when you look in the eyes of your children or your grandchildren or children on the street, they're going to suffer. And guess what? Look, guess what country is going to be the first to go? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Blank. But we have to do something. We have to really stand up. And a lot of it is, you know, the, um, you know, the people who are running the show. I've had enough of them. I'm certainly sure many of you have as well. And it's time to stop it. I can't believe how. You know, we've spent so much time hating each other and we're hating the wrong people. It's not it's not your neighbor who's brown or blue or green. It's it's our leadership has been absolutely horrible. Um, and the Republicans have never done a damn thing as long as I've been alive in this country for any of us. And pulling yourself up the, by your bootstraps is only going to make sense if you've got fins that actually will help you swim. Because this is going down. And whatever you subscribe to um, about what's happening, you need to like really pay attention because it's it's just for real now. Well, well, as we end off our conversation tonight on a sad note, we recently lost a, a true icon uh, a few days ago. And uh want to, uh, just a comment just came on to make sure here. Christina is saying Elon and Jeffrey creating space race 2.0. Yeah. yeah. So getting back to, I or at least I think I can speak for all three of us, a person that we feel is more important than Elon <laughs> and, and Jeff, uh, we lost a great icon the other day, Mr. And I have to say it, Mr. Sidney Poitier. And uh, as we close out our conversation, I just want to get, both of your thoughts on, they call me Mr. Tibbs. You know, it's, it's um, his body of work. I think people um, really don't um, have an idea of how vast his work was. Of course, there were um, the movies like Lilies of the Field to Sir with Love, but then he also, you know, kind of flipped it in the 1970s and was doing those buddy comedies with Bill yes. Cosby. Uptown That's Saturday true. Night and um, uh, let's do it again. Yes. And then he also was a director and was yeah. able to direct people like Richard Pryor and, and Gene Wilder like he did in Stir Crazy. And um, I mean, he's had a career that just uh, was probably one of the most diverse, diverse yes. careers for a black actor in Hollywood um, in history. Well, for me, whenever I get a chance to watch, I wa love watching In the Heat of the Night. Th that that movie right. is price. It's it's time you you can watch it anytime. Yeah, you know I think that you know all the different roles that he played. Uh, there's a gentleman who comes on one of my platforms regularly named Ch Ch D Chanson Berry was very close with Sidney Poitier because every year he would visit him for his birthday. Him mm -hmm. and Oprah would visit mm -hmm. Mr. Poitier for his birthday. And what he did for a people, for the world, because I, I could imagine he went through some stuff that we may never know about. True. Mm -hmm. And he stayed defiant and he is one of those small group of, especially in the entertainment world, true icons 
regardless of color. I regard him as a true icon. And I was speaking with someone today and they say, do we have any Sydney Poitiers now in, when it comes to blacks and entertainment? Oh, you know, Denzel Washington always plays some version of Denzel Washington. So that's about as yeah. close as you could get, but he's, but just the, I think the, that kind of versatility doesn't exist anymore. Right. I agree with you. Uh, Jen, yeah. Jen is saying here, so sad, the best actor, he will be missed. Yeah, he was just. No, and, and folks, too, if you do get a chance, and because a lot of the stuff now you have to pay to see, it's on to Patreon. serve with well. love, I love, and yeah. of course, you know, uh, yeah, guess who's coming yeah. to dinner? That's yeah. one of my favorites, too. I just watched it a couple weeks ago. It, it, if, and so, if, if you want to see, and this is my opinion alone, if you want to see true acting, I mean, true acting. You watch some of the movies that we've mentioned. Mm -hmm. You and as as Aisha yeah. said, the depth of his characters, the versatility of his characters. Um, it's true. I mean, and remember, he was acting like right up until the end. It's like he he's had so many. You don't want to call it a comeback, but he's had so many times where he's just you know come back and, and we interesting someone we, just put something he here differently like he was on um, comment. jordan Peele, Peele, Peele probably the closest to the next mm. well, maybe i mean you know i've never seen him do way, any drama. Not like yeah i've never seen him yeah. do any drama i've seen him direct he directs those movies mm. but i've never seen him in anything the, that, in that's that. the thing yeah yeah, yeah no, i've I, never seen him in drama yeah, yeah. but yeah he Sydney Poitier commanded respect. Yeah. Yeah. You know, respect. He did Harry Belafonte. Those mm -hmm. two. Yes. You know, please. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that is. Christina has another comment here in terms of directing and writing and creating roles for black people. Yeah. Yes. And I think he really, he really kind of showed how how diverse the black experience is yes. throughout his work mm -hmm. yes and again i don't get into entertainment too much but i didn't hear anything i don't hear too many people say anything bad about him no no nope. so and everyone i i've heard so far have said that he was a perfect gentleman hmm hmm uh, that's 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 huge that should so we we've we've lost a great one and if you do again if you get any chance even if you have to pay see it oh a black beauty here saying our brother was so intelligent and so poised i agree the poise yes yeah respected for setting the standard that said lamb your equal as i am your equal i am your equal as a, as a man Indian. actor yes yes Ag agreed i I, I'm going to see if I can dig up any interviews. I need to see any if he any interviews of him. I don't care when they were done. I'd love to see some interviews of him. Yeah. Because he did, like, and I, I agree, the poise. The yeah. poise. Like, yeah. he really knew, but, and, but you, even though when he got angry, he still had a way of doing it in a, sure. Like, the, like that scene in, in the heat of the night where he slaps the doctor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And he slapped like, the look he gives the doctor. <laughs> yes, and it was just that is like my favorite scene ever of Sidney Poitier in a film. Yeah, like he he just he had such presence. Yeah, right. such it's like presence. his anger was righteous in that. Yes, scene. agreed, agreed. Well, ladies, another conversation is done. I tell you, I tell you. Yep. So should we be looking at, forward to anything over the next week or anything you're keeping a watch on between now and our next epic conversation? Um, anything we should be looking at over? Whoa. Ah, and maybe this will come to more fruition. I've been reading some reports that Joy Reid is going to get. Bye-bye. What? What? Yes. Really? Why? I was, I've read some reports 
that, and we'll probably talk about it offline. I was beginning to read that there's rumors out there that Joy Reid is going to get cut by by springtime because her ratings are going. But you know, the, here's the thing: that seven o'clock wow. hour has always had. It's like the ratings of the seven o'clock hour have never been the best. MSNBC knows that. They know that um, the nine o'clock hour is their best hour with Rachel Maddow. It's always been their ratings getter. I don't understand the seven o'clock, um, the seven p.m. thing. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, because yeah, remember I'm, the last she took over where Hardball was. Yeah, well, I okay, didn't know so that. now again, I'm reading it and it's not been substantiated, but it appears like I'm reading reading something. It appears that MSNB, oh, whatever, okay. yeah, I'm, I'm reading this too, may no longer have a show on the network this spring for due to a round of reshuffling. President, of, yep, so there's rumors out there that it'll be gone by, yeah, it'll be gone by, uh. By by springtime, yeah, and say MSNBC's primetime viewership dropped by twenty five percent in twenty twenty one, with Reed's ratings steadily plummeting throughout the year. Hmm. And that the rideout, according to Nielsen data, the rideout started the year with an average of two point five two two million five hundred ninety two thousand viewers. By November, though, the number of viewers had dropped to one million one hundred twenty nine thousand. Well, you know, here's, here's the other thing, too. Right now, Joy Reid is situated between... She's not situated in a good spot. Ari Melber, his show used to be... has so much spunk and life in it in 2018, 2019. Now, I just kind of... Sometimes I watch, sometimes I don't. And then she's followed by that whiny Chris Hayes. <laughs> but it's, it's a really peculiar hour to be in because it's sure. like... Hmm. So I just what, think what, that people just took a back seat to news in general. I think yeah. that, you know, MSN is going to have to do... 45 isn't in the news all the time. That's why the ratings are dropping. They still talk about it. Even I don't yeah. watch half as much as, you yeah. know, on anything. I can't take it. It totally, you know... So Black it's Beauty, like, yeah, sad about Jory. Well, we'll keep a watch on see anything more comes to fruition of it. Uh, Blue and, Rain... And, we same. have to remember. What would her she, show be replaced with? Good question. We'll be keeping more a watch totalitarianism. On it, Are they slowly moving us in the direction they want to go? Shoot. All right. So, on that note, we are finished for today. Don't, and don't all- forget, CNN merged with somebody else, so it's changing too. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So the media wars and the and many years ago, back in the 80s, there was something when media con- companies are coming together called convergence. So round two of convergence is happening more and more. So we will keep an eye on it. As always, we want to have our wonderful friends give their contact information. Number one, it is Jill Jones time. I am at Jill D. Jones at Twitter. And you wonderful. can find me there. Excellent. <laughs> Next up, Aisha K. Staggers. Aisha Staggers at Twitter. Wonderful. And then there's me, a guy, Dr. Vibe. You can catch me at a number of places. Web, the D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W.com. Twitter at D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W. Instagram, or they call it the gram, the D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W. Email, dr. period. V-I-B-E at the D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W.com. If you have any ideas, any subjects you want us to have full conversations about, we would love you to contribute. As always, want to thank everyone who watched the conversation live tonight. Welcome back, Blue Rains. As always, Black Beauty, love how you're always early. Jen, thank you for always being there. Christina, I think this is first time for you. Thank you so much for dropping by. And everyone else who watched live on the replay or listened on the replay, it's appreciated and not taken for granted. If you want to catch replays of these epic conversations, and there's so many of them, like we've been going for a while. <laughs> they, you can go to the Dr. Vibe Show on YouTube and Facebook or go to my website, the drvibeshow.com. So as always, I like to close off with this. Live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get smaller to get stronger. 
block assumptions that aim bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Love, faith, and respect. And remember to give yourselves grace. We'll see you next Saturday. God bless. Peace be well. Keep the faith and walk good.